It would be a very short one. Probably only one item on there. Well, we have to announce whether or not if Santa comes to town, we gotta we gotta know about that. That's all I'm really caring about. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> well, it's in in uh, regards to the um, findings that we have to make a decision on from the revocation hearing. Uh, looks like we're all pretty much here. Let me know when you're ready, Holly. I'm ready. All right, good evening. We'll call this meeting to order. It's Tuesday, December 8th of 2020, City Council meeting. The first item would be the roll call. Holly? Forsma? Here. Caravello? Here. Doom? Here. Kylie? Here. Hirsch? Here. Hunt? Here. Jensen? Here. Rogaki? Here. Mayeski? Here. Reeves? Here. Schumacher? Here. Tikowski? Here. There are 12 alders present. All right, thank you, Holly. Uh, next item would be communications and presentations. Are there any communications from uh, council members this evening? If I could, uh, Meryl, uh, <coughs> excuse me, Mayor Swadley, if I could. Sure, go ahead, Alder Jensen. Yeah, Alder Jensen. Um, I just uh, wanted to give the council an update on the revocation hearing. Um, this past Thursday, uh, December 3rd, uh, the Public Safety Committee did hold um, a hearing uh, to hear testimonies in regards to the uh, city of Stoughton summons filed against uh, Shaker Saloon LLC uh, seeking the revocation of their liquor license. <clears throat> the hearing proceeded with the assistance of the committee's attorney, Al Reuters. And uh, the following is, is what we, uh, the procedure that we'll, we'll, uh, we'll have to follow. Um, the attorney has uh, 20 days from the meeting the third on the third to submit what is called the findings. Uh, the, the council will have the opportunity to review those findings and submit questions to the attorney uh, for his uh, comments on. Uh, then if we hold the meeting on December 22nd, uh, we will then at that point uh, uh, review the findings and then we will uh, be required to, um, will be required, buddy, <clears throat> excuse me, will be required to um, uh, make a decision on how we want uh, any or arguments to be presented. Uh, if, if there's any objections from the prosecution or from the uh, uh, defense, uh, they would either be oral, uh, written, or both. Uh, and we would have to make that determination on that day. Uh, and then, um, Technically, it would be a second reading, which would be on our January 12th meeting. And at that point, we would hear those uh, uh, arguments um, from both parties. And then uh, we would be voting on the revocation at that time. So what that would require then is for us to have the meeting on the 22nd. If the council does not want to do that, um, it would be okay, but uh, the committee felt it would be best to, to expedite this and get it done as quickly as possible. So I would just say that if anybody has a conflict with the date, uh, maybe just email Holly and let her know. We wanna make sure that if we hold the meeting, we have a quorum and we know it's right around the holidays. So certainly, you know, people may have plans. Greg, what was the date of that meeting again? I spaced it. I'm sorry, the decision? The meeting that in December. Oh, okay, it would be the 22nd council meeting. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. Oh, and I, I, I forgot to even say what the, what the committee decided or, or uh, you voted unanimously to recommend revocation. Are there... <laughs> Any other communications from council members? I have one, Mayor. Uh, other person, Lagaki, I can barely hear you. Let me change that. 
Okay. While she's changing that, I just want to say that I'm really upset that we're in Zoom meetings because Brett has a faculty Twitter on it and we can't. We totally missed that, Regina. I said I'm really bummed. I said. I said I'm really bummed that we're in Zoom meetings because we're missing Brett's fabulous winter sweater. And yeah. thank you, Brett, for like showing it off. No problems. I, I couldn't wear the hat because it got in the way of my headset. It's very nice, Brett. It <laughs> contrasts with the brown behind you very well. That's true, but I. I really blend in. I've got a green chair that I'm sitting in, so I, I actually just blend right into it. All right, Alder Crystal Lagaki, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Um, this is a just a preview of some coming attractions, wanting to make you aware of an initiative um, that um, I felt um, I, I didn't, I was gonna wait a while and given our current status in the city uh, around COVID and vulnerable adults, um, I thought it was important to introduce this. And so I just wanted to make you aware that you're going to be getting emails, invitations, um, hopefully in joining with the city wellness committee and already speaking with some key leadership folks in the city like Regina and Mayor Swadley, um, hoping that you will help get behind what's an initiative for us to help take care of each other, to help give each other peace of mind at this time of year, particularly around our health care. And for me, I do see it as a political issue. Um, what you'll be seeing is invitation to complete what's called an advanced directive. Some of you may already have plenty of your paperwork in place, but may I tell you, in my many years as a clinical social worker at a medical facility, and particularly during the time of COVID, I cannot tell you how important it is for people to please do the basics. And so using all of our existing resources, virtually doing this, not needing, uh, doing this on a shoestring, wanting to use our available resources, I am hoping that as council members, you will get behind this important initiative to help people explore and get in writing who could help represent their medical decisions if you personally aren't able to do so. It's a simple form on the state website. Questions are phrased in a double negative that can be a little misleading, but wow, what a difference these documents make in the lives of people. So I just wanted to give you a preview that um, emails will be coming out. We are gonna encourage that as many Stoughton people, whether they live here or work here, or any interested groups, this is a 15 minute process of completing paperwork. The work comes in for the person completing the document to figure out who their people, their representatives may be, and what they would like them to know about their healthcare. We will give them resources with the existing resources that exist in the city, um, as well as offer opportunities for people to ask questions and get what they need. Thank you for this time. And boy, at some point, I'm hoping not publicly to ask you if you have your documents completed. If not, I'd be happy to be your person to help get them done. Thank you. Uh, thank you, all the person Lagaki. Um, any other communications from others this evening? Uh, Mr. Mayor, I just have a question of, of Jean, um, if that's okay. Uh, make Jean, it quick because uh, it's not really an agenda item. Okay. I just, just wonder, is it still the case that social workers can witness these documents? Social workers and chaplains in most medical facilities are able to witness those. And actually I'm putting together um, a group of people 
um, who can help witness documents right here in Stoughton. We want to make this easy for folks. But yes, the carve out when you're in medical facilities are that social workers and chaplains can. But wow, all when I did my documents many years ago, we had our neighbors over for dessert and drinks. And we all did our documents and we were able to witness each other's. I'll no, give you a lot of education on that later. And thank you. I'm, I don't want to take too much time. Thank you. Yeah, we do, we do have two clinical social workers on, stay, on uh, council, so either of us could witness. So. All right, thank you. Any other communications from alders? And I do have one from the clerk's office. Uh, Holly, the floor is yours. Um, just a quick reminder that the first day to circulate nomination paperwork uh, for Older person was December 1st. Um, if you are currently an alder that is up for election but planning on not uh, seeking re election, your notice of non candidacy is due uh, by 5 p.m. on December 28th. Um, and then the final, if you are um, seeking office, those nomination paperwork, uh, that nomination paperwork is due on January 5th. Um, and if anyone has any questions regarding that, please feel free um, to reach out to me and I can assist you with that. Okay, uh, thank you, Holly. And uh, we'll go into our agenda. Um, minutes and reports are in the packet. Uh, the first item on the agenda then would be public comment period. And I have two people signed up to speak. Uh, the first one would be Al Waller and he wants to speak uh, regarding the dam removal. Uh, Al, I believe you're on the call. If you already have three minutes, Holly's going to keep track of time. Thank you, Mayor. I want you and the City Council to know that I am all for new business growth in the City of Stoughton. Congratulations for all your work on expanding the business park and several new businesses have already moved in and more buildings are under construction. Uh, for the dam removal, I have contacted many engineers from the DNR, Dane County, Army Corps of Engineers, local water experts, CFOs, many businesses, and they've all come to the same conclusion. The city of Stoughton has not done its homework, and much of the information published in the local newspapers is incomplete, inaccurate, and misleading. From 2016 to 2019, the plan was to build a water park and leave the existing dam. And most people didn't give a damn about that because as long as you build something, leave the old, they don't care. However, you changed the plan in 2020 and it uh, made a lot of people a little pissed off, including myself. So what happened in December of 2019 that uh, had you changed the game plan? I, I think it might have been the sediment assessment report that showed high levels of pollution and toxic sediment. Um, Rather than hold Unaroyal responsible for the cleanup of their contamination, uh, you and the city council decided to basically do a cover-up, take out the dam, lower the water, expose the mill pond, let it dry out long enough to bring in two feet of clean topsoil and cover up years of pollution. With the support of the city attorney and the legal team from Unaroyal, it is probably much cheaper covering up the contamination than spending the $5.6 million for Unaroyal to clean it up. We all know the Whitewater Park is a ruse. Uh, from a business standpoint, it's gonna be a failure. Um, you, you talk about, is it river ready? You've, you've got a nice little marketing piece here. Is it Yahara River ready? Uh, ask yourself, would you, your children, your grandchildren be willing to go in that water? I personally would not. Uh, during the November 10th council meeting, I recall a dialogue between uh, you and Regina uh, regarding the dam not qualifying to be listed on any historic record. Many of you might remember that statement. Um, I was surprised when I read a letter from May 15th, quote, this is from the Department of uh, Army Corps of Engineers. The Stoughton Dam is a structure older than 50 years and eligible for listing on the National Register of Historic Places. So, when I went to, to look at the, the notes and recording from the WSTO TV, that had been deleted from the recording. So I'm really wondering why that information was deleted. Um, I tried to do an open records report, report for specific records and um, that was denied probably because it was too specific. So later this evening, you're gonna vote on more uh, taxpayer money for the attorney. 
And I'd really like you to think that um, this is a little bit excessive for removing a dam. Okay, thank you. Um, the next one, I uh, had an email from Sharon Mason Borsma that she wanted me to read. And it goes like this. Dear Mayor and City Council members, on November 10th, 2020, at the Stoughton City Council meeting, the decision was passed by a vote of 10 to 2 to authorize $282,907 for three projects, dam removal and whitewater engineering, whitewater dam removal, restoration and remediation, and whitewater trails engineering. This is included in the Capital Projects Fund in the 2021 City of Stoughton budget. As a taxpayer living in the city, I would like to know specifically and in detail what the studies entail, the purpose of each element of these projects, and the line item cost for each. Also, who requested funds for these studies be included in the budget? What purpose do these studies serve? Is to supplement more grant applications or for permits to remove the dam? I believe it is only fair and provides due diligence for the taxpayers in the city and the townships to have knowledge of detailed information for the purpose of money approved for a project that has yet not yet been completed, i.e. dam removal and a whitewater park build. I'm requesting a line item analysis of the cost, the work done, who is providing the studies and the purpose. In the name of transparency, all the citizens of Stoughton and those affected in surrounding areas by plan changes to the Yahara River are entitled to this information or easy access to it, i.e. a link to select for its availability to this information online. Thank you, Sharon Mason Borsma. Those are the only two uh, public comments we had for this evening. Um, next item on the agenda would be the consent agenda. And I would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. There's, there's a motion and a second. Would anybody like anything removed and acted on separately from the consent agenda? Mayor. Mayor, I don't have a removal. I just need a clarification. One of the, um, the operator resolution, there was a person, Angela Dunn, but it doesn't say where the place of business is. And I was wondering if we know where that is. Um, sometimes operators apply without, uh, before they get a job. Um, so I'm guessing that she is applying for an operator's license so then she can go apply to jobs and say that she already holds a, a bartender's license somewhere or okay. holds a bartender license in the city. All right. I just had not seen that before. Usually they all had jobs associated with it. So, all right. Thank you. Oh, are there any other questions about the consent agenda? Hearing none, all in favor, say aye. 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 And any opposed? And that motion carries. That takes us to old business, which is ordinance 26 of 2020 for a second reading. And that one comes from the plan commission, Alderperson Caravello. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this is ordinance 26 of 2020, an ordinance repealing zoning code section 78-205 parentheses 12, uh, and all ordinance references to a group development within the Stoughton Municipal Code of Ordinances, and I so move. Is there a second? Second. Second by President Hirsch, Alderperson Caravello. Um, and as we discussed about this at last meeting, this is essentially removing re some redundancies that are uh, very specific in this section. Um, and uh, these things are actually covered in other parts of site plan evaluation and uh just cleaning up some 
doing doing some more uh, cleaning up of paperwork, and I'm sure uh, uh, Plan Director Sheil would have more specifics if anybody needs more information. Are there any questions from council members? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 And anybody opposed? That motion carries. Uh, next item is R179 of 2020. This one comes from the Finance Committee. All the person Schumacher. All right, R179 of 2020, a resolution by the Common Council of the City of Stoughton approving agreement to undertake development in the plat of Abel Plat. So move. Second. second. And I heard a second. All the person Schumacher. Um, this is just our agreement so that the developer can uh, begin to uh, do the things they need to do to get those plats ready for development um, and the costs to be incurred by them. And are there any questions from council members this evening? Hearing none, all in favor of the resolution say aye. 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 And any opposed? None opposed, that motion carries. Mm -hmm. uh, next item is R180 of 2020. And this one also comes from the Finance Committee, Alder Person Schumacher. R180 of 2020, a resolution to approve the city attorney agreement for legal services with Stafford Rosenbaum for calendar year 2021. So moved. Second. And there's a second, Alder Person Schumacher. Um, this is a one-year contract to continue with the legal representation that we've had so far. Um, they've agreed that they're going to not seek a, a fee increase for this year and are keeping the rates the same as last year and the year before that. Any questions or comments from Alders on this one? Question. I have I'll oh, go ahead, Ozzy. Question. Uh, I wasn't sure if that was all the person my esky or all the yes, person. Was. Okay, go ahead. All the person my esky, then just, Doom and then Tatalski. Just a curiosity as to uh, what's the reasoning for uh, finance looking at it on this date, the same as the council meeting. Um, that is a good question. Um, that is when it has come up on that, or at least on agenda that I've seen so far. I can tell you as, that my as conversation- you know, As you know, I had an issue in the past with council, uh, council voting on things that are going through a committee on the same night does not give council a chance to uh, look at look at all the information and to think about it for a while. Uh, you know, unless there's unless there's a a good reason for it, that this should not be happening. And I'm just bringing it up again. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll tend to agree with Alder Majeski. I'll tend to agree with Alder Majeski on that. I, I do would like to have a little bit more time to think about things. Although this one, because this one is uh purely just a changing of the calendar date on it um i'm not sure that this one would have as much impact as say something that would be of brand new information or something that would have changed at all well it it, it may it may have if people had issues with what was going on with the uh the law firm that's representing us I'm not saying there is right now or anything to that fact but it has in the past, and there there has been discussions in the past on on uh, which law firms we were uh, looking at. Uh, I don't believe you were on council at the time, uh, but that's not really the issue. The issue is is that this could have been brought up 
in the prior in in the prior council meeting before before tonight and i'm just questioning why that's happening again yeah uh, i mean i will agree with you on that uh, we should definitely um, have at least uh, a one meeting gap in between making decisions unless they're of uh, utmost importance to be acted upon i agree mayor this is uh matt can i weigh in for a second sure okay there's there's no need for the council to act on this tonight if it if you don't want to you can you can delay action on this until january or february as far as i'm concerned i'm happy to continue working um you know i uh at this we're not proposing any change in rates i'm happy to continue working and providing legal services at the same rates until such time as the council is comfortable considering this matter i'd also just like to make sure you understand that even though this is described as a one-year contract, um, the council has the right under this agreement and under the law to change its attorneys at any time. So even if you were to approve this contract tonight or at some future date, you would have the right to decide that you wanted to find different representation at any time. And I guess, you know, we wanted to get this at least out in front of you um, to let you understand that, you know, Matt's firm has made an offer uh, given the, the COVID and uncertainty with budgets to basically keep the rate flat for the next year and then, you know, kind of go from there. And we're trying to decide whether or not, you know, we were going to propose you know, a five-year contract or uh, when Matt came to us and said, well, why don't we just do this for a year given the circumstances, that's what we decided to do. I did give uh, the finance committee a heads up at the last meeting that this would be on for tonight. Um, you know, so it wasn't like it came out of anywhere. Uh, we didn't have enough uh, time at the last agenda to get it on and we we're pushing it as it was. It was a full agenda at finance committee. So certainly I understand, you know, the <clears throat> point is well taken from Alder person Majewski and going forward, you know, we'll certainly try to do a better job. Mr. Mayor, could I, can I ask a question? Well, yeah, I, I think, think, I think, the, I think uh, Alder person Doom and then Tukowski was next in line. Yes. I didn't have anything. Oh, okay. I saw your name pop up. Did yeah, you have something, Joyce? I do, and I apologize. It's not sub uh, of any substance, but um, in the um, um, of attachment A, uh, the first page, last line, there is a typo that is maybe moderately significant. I just wanted to say there's an end where it, where it should be an and. So that's all I wanted to report. And, right. and on those lines, I just want to make sure that it says 2020 rates for Sun Prairie. I think we need one that actually says Stoughton in the That's document. Yeah, I apologize. This is what happens when uh, when you go too fast. I will send a corrected draft out uh, for you. All right. All the person Borzma. Yeah, I, I just had a question. That is, if the it comes to council where, where we have representation on opposing views, who makes a decision whether Matt should be uh, involved in those decisions? We just had a, I, I found it interesting, we had a constituent just raise the issue of, uh, of the city attorney representing, uh, representing issues related to dam removal and the, and the Whitewater Park. Um, and uh, he, he may be representing, maybe representing staff of the city, but not necessarily, not necessarily council. Um, in those kind of situations, um, does the council have the right to say, we don't want Matt representing us in such and such a way? Uh, it's just an example, and I raised it because it was raised by one of our constituents today during the public comment. Well, before I let Matt answer that, so, I would just say that on that particular example, the council did vote in favor of moving forward with that. So I don't really understand that argument, but in general, Matt, I mean, would you want to respond to that? 
Sure. Um, <clears throat> so there are cases where uh, the council, um, where there are different opinions on the council about um, what the city should do as a policy matter. Um, my responsibility is to implement the policy decisions that are made by majority of members of the council. So if, if the council makes as a, as a body a particular decision, um, even though not all council members may agree with that decision, my responsibility is to represent the decision the council has made. Um, and um, so that's one, one thing that you, I guess, uh, th that I could say in response to that. Uh, I, so, and, and, you know, it's not, we've, we've had a couple of situations where the council um, found itself in a position where there wasn't a unanimous agreement over how to proceed. There have been some divisions. My responsibility is not to make policy decisions for the council. I don't, I don't have a vote on anything. My job is to, is to, re to represent the city and, and I respond to the decisions the council makes. Okay, uh, just okay. just to just to clarify my question, and that is that there was a uh, a request for open records uh, report about a, a various items related to the dam removal and the and the Whitewater Park. And um, your position, I think, Matt, was that uh, it was too specific, and and uh, uh, you deny the request for an open records request. And and I'm just wondering where you would get that authorization to. Uh, deny an open records request. So I didn't deny it unilaterally. Uh, first of all, the uh, I think you should all see the request and the letter. It was not denied on the grounds that it was too specific. It was denied on the grounds that it was not specific at all as to the subject matter uh, of the records that were being requested. Um, and so my letter uh, cited the law with respect to requests that are not reasonably specific being in, inappropriate or insufficient requests under the law. I asked for clarification and I invited uh, the requester. I said that we would be happy to, to discuss with the requester the request to try and help facilitate, you know, understanding better what the requester was asking for. I did that in consultation with uh, uh, the clerk's office, the park department's office, the mayor's office, and uh, the finance department was also at least involved in the email communication so that the finance department was aware of how the request was being responded to because the request in fact touched upon um, the parks department, the clerk's office, the mayor's office, the finance department, all of those departments were implicated potentially in the request. So it was a very broad request, um, and again, the request was was not denied in the sense that there was a, a statement that records would not be provided. The response was, this is an extremely broad request. We, it's not possible to tell what the subject matter is of the records that you're looking for without clarification. Um, so I was asked by city staff to provide legal advice in, deci in deciding how to respond. I did that and that was the response. And again, I would invite you all to review both the request for records and the response. If the city uh, council believes the response was inappropriate and wants to direct a different response, you certainly have that right. Well, I will send that out. Um, this is really not on the agenda tonight. What we're talking about here is the uh, agreement with the city attorney for one year. So at this point, I'd like to determine whether or not the council wants to take action or if they would like to postpone it until a future meeting. Um, I think, you know, for to take um, Elder Majewski's um, kind of opinion and Brett's kind of request too, let's just hold off till the December 22nd meeting. You know, give everybody a chance to review it. Not that we have any problems, at least I don't right now with with the, the their attorney as such, but just to make sure that we're doing what we had set out to do, that we were gonna have at least a meeting's worth of gap time between what is brought up at finance and what is brought up at, at city council. So as attorney Dragney said, it, 
you know, it's not going to affect anything. And I think we should just follow our own policy. So if we can just table it till next meeting, that would be great. You want to offer a motion to that effect? Sure. I motion to table uh, the decision on the attorney mm -hmm. until next meeting, December 22nd. Second. And on a the table, there's no discussion. So all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, we'll bring that one back then. Thank you very much. Next item is R181 of 2020. And this one um, is coming from me. So I'm looking to hopefully have somebody introduce it. Basically what it is is our emergency order, which includes allowing the outdoor dining and alcohol service expires at the end of the month. And I'm trying to be optimistic about the weather that'll hold on. So what we asked the city attorney to do is to draft a resolution for an extension until I believe it was um, in May. I don't see the date in front of me. I right think it was now. May 31st. May 31st. And what we intend on doing between now and, and May 31st is try to come up with a more permanent process uh, to allow the outdoor dining. And certainly we would want council uh, discussion into that process. But for tonight, what we simply wanna do is just extend the order to allow it until then. So I'll at this your, point- I'll make an introduction if you wish. Your honor. Go ahead. Okay. Um, <clears throat> well, let's see what happened. Well, there it is. Uh, let's see. Uh, resolution 181 2020, extending of the declaration of state emergency in the city of Stoughton, uh, delaying uh, the expiration of authorizing outdoor dining and alcohol service and consumption. And I would move for approval. Second. And is there any discussion? I have a question. Uh, go um, ahead. If the situation with the pandemic becomes severe, is how how um, easy will it be to change that to, especially if there's an emergency order that says, you know, outdoor dining not allowed and that sort of thing, or is it flexible in that way? I believe the emergency order would take precedence, would it not? Yeah. That sounds right. Okay. Okay. I'm good then. Thank you. All right. Thank you for the question. Any other questions? Very none. All in favor of the resolution say aye. 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 And any opposed? None opposed. That motion carries. Uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. There's a second. second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. That motion carries. Thank you. We'll let you know about the 22nd. Be safe. Thanks, yeah. everyone. Be well, everybody. Bye. Thanks, Gene. Bye, everybody. So Bye. long.